I, uh... So there are a number of kits I was considering before I picked the Skyvan. Illusion, the Halifax, uh, black plastic, void it like the plague, horrible stuff. And the Hadley Page, uh, this was a serious contender. It's a beautiful kit for its age, really superb. But it's, uh, even though it's 172 scale, it's the rigging that will be involved. I won't even tackle a uh, rigging on a, a wing nuts kit. Uh, it's just something I can't do. So I've been wanting to build this for some time now, but really put me off was the decal sheet. Uh, it's in good nick, but it's yellowed over the age of time, obviously. I thought I'll do the usual trick of putting the decal sheet on the windowsill and let the sun do its business over time, but never really did. So I dug it out again, I thought I need to build it. One of those kits, uh, when it came out at the time as a kid, uh, you wouldn't have even looked at it twice. Well, you looked at it twice thinking, what an ugly looking aeroplane. Uh, why would I want to buy that? But with age, I've mellowed. So, so the first thing I had to do before I could proceed with this build was to create a new decal sheet or new artwork. If that turned out okay, printed out okay, looked okay, then we're away. So one must assume that this has all worked because I'm here now talking to you. Or did it? Let's find out and see. So the first thing I need to do is to create some artwork for those new decals. These will have to look good or the business, otherwise this build's going nowhere. So I scanned the old Airfix decals in, 600 dpi, and loaded it into some software. Usually I try and find a font close enough and then I'll modify that font. But after a lot of faffing around, I decided it would be quicker to trace straight from the scan. So only when I finish and then decided just to check the Olympic rings from actual photographs that I noticed the Airfix font rendering was a bit different. So I ended up drawing all this out again, this time with the image of the proper logo. Nobody to blame but myself. So I hope you can see the subtle difference between the two fonts. Not that Airfix was wrong, this actual logo did exist, but for whatever reason, the Olympic Airlines updated it. The rings were next, and looking at various pics of the Skyvan, these rings varied in colour and layout. So I finished the artwork, and I need to print this out. But also, I need to print it out, and I just want to mess around and check that the sizes are okay before I start messing around with the colours. So this is the second printout with the changes to the colours. Now I won't get this perfect because of the homemade process involved. But the rule of thumb here is that whatever colour I print out will be slightly lighter when I apply it to the model. Happy with everything, I've printed it out on clear decal paper. So I'm going to leave the ink to dry for a few hours, under cover of course, before I seal everything in with several coats of Tamiya gloss varnish. So now that I'm happy with the decals, I can crack on with the build. Let's take a quick look in the box. First thing to know is how bad the transparent parts are. The decals.
So once again, I've cut and cleaned all the parts and as I've gone on, I have done some assembly. I'm gonna give the larger parts a good clean as they had a yellow tinge to them. This must be the old release agent, which would have by now truly bonded to the surface after all these years. While wings are setting, I'll make a start on the interior. Now if I was building the Oman version, I'd have this nice smooth floor and have the Chinook type seats either side. But with building the Civi Sky Van, I'll need to drill out all these holes. Lots of seats to build here and detail wise for their age, they're pretty good. Although by the time I close those fuse large halves up, we won't see any of this. As I've built the seats, I've been dry fitting them to the floor so they set properly. So I'm going to paint the interior parts, give them a coat of black, to some of them. I'll coat the rear, underneath and the side of the seats with black. And then I'll apply a medium grey on top. And then some hand painting for the finer bits. I'm creating some headrest covers from Tamiya Tape, cut to shape and painted. Now the paint's dry, let's add these to the seats. The pilot's next and you get military and civil figures supplied in this kit. And what can I say about the detail of the Civi Pilots? It's exquisite. We'll put some figures produced today to shame. It's just a pity that it won't be appreciated through that very poor transparent part. So I'm applying a medium blue first. Once that's dry, I'll add a darker version of that color as a wash to create the shadows. Flesh color, mix using these two colors. Once that's all dry, I'll give a light wash to the whole surface to bring out all that detail. So let's add all this hidden detail. Nearly forgot the weight here, which is essential. Next, I'm supposed to add the lower fuse large to the lower floor, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to add it to one of the side fuse large halves. Now this area is very fiddly, and what doesn't help, that three of the parts of the fuse large are very badly warped. So after a lot of bending to get the side fuse large straight, I've also taped the two rear part doors in place. This will aid me in locating that lower floor part. I can see this is going to be fun. So I've glued the lower fuselage half and I've also glued the roof to the other side of the fuselage. I don't know why I've done this. Perhaps it will make sense later on. I hope so. So let's add the seat assembly and the internal roof. Time to close up.
Now I'm just going to focus on gluing the bottom half first. Then once that's set, I shall give my attention to the top seam. Now for the rear door to fit it, I've had to take three lugs off and I'm just left with one just to hold it in place. You see here I've glued the bulkhead, that black area. And as much as I didn't want to do this at this stage, no option really, I've added the nose landing gear. I just hope I don't catch it. The radome cover isn't the best of fits. The transparent parts are terrible, especially the front windscreen, which has all sorts of imperfections. The main one being a ripple bang in the center. I don't know whether you can see this here. It looks, it looks like it's on the outside because the inner surface looks smooth. So I'm gonna bite the bullet and sand the surface. And the reason why I'm hesitant is that the plastic is very thin and very brittle. If I get this wrong, I'll have a major task in creating a new vac form replacement. A road I don't want to go down. So the first pass has been with a thousand grit. You can see here a little sink mark. Next, I've used a polishing nail block, numbers three and then four, and then finished off with a polishing cloth. Now, unfortunately, the imperfection is still there. It's actually the flow of the plastic during the injection process, and nothing will cure that except a hammer. So I dip in Johnson's Clear, put it on some kitchen cloth, undercover, and let it set. Now before I fix the windscreen to the body, I want to make a template from it. And from that, create some artwork so I can create some masks for the windscreen. That's the idea. The real world may have a different idea. So with the template drawn, I can now add the windscreen to the fuselage. Not a good fit. As you can see, some of the larger areas have been filled with plastic card. The smaller ones I will fill with squadron putty. Now what I should have done first, and I don't know why I didn't do this, is add the windscreen first and then sand it in situ. The SL parts, because I don't want to add the prop at this stage, I'll glue the sleeve to the inner cowl first. Now this won't secure the prop properly later, but it will hold it better. Because I want to clean up the nacelle without the exhaust getting in the way, I've needed to trim certain areas around here just so I can fit the exhaust in afterwards. These parts should be built as one assembly, but it's hard to clean these parts up properly by doing that. And the way I've approached it requires me to cut out the pin away from the rudders. Another fiddly area, the ailerons and the flaps, but it will look nice when it's all finished. So from that quick sketch that I drew earlier on, I've created some framework for the windscreen. I've drawn one side first, and then once I was happy with it, I mirrored the image. Now I've been messing around with the thicknesses of the frame before I ended up with this final result. You can see here, I've cut some of the image out just to make sure it fits okay. So cutting the masks out. Oh, by the by, I had a reaction with something to the windscreen. What a real downer. Masks applied and with a little extra trimming around the main edge seems to have worked okay. Now the final paint scheme, there are two options I could have gone for. The one that Roy Cross painted on the box, which is all white. <laughs> Very droll. Or what seems to be the later version, which has silver wings and an underbelly. It also has a different band along the fuselage. I've gone for the latter because of the updated logo I created. But one issue is that the logo, looking at the photographs, looks black. I could go back to the original artwork, 
change the colour, reprint it out on some decal paper and do it properly. But for me, life's too short to be worried about that. So I've given a light coat of grey to all the parts to spot for any imperfections before I apply AK's Extreme Metal Matte Aluminium, the first coat to go down. I've left this for a few days to dry before masking off ready for the white. Now for that stripe. I've created a custom mix, but I think it needs to be a touch darker. In fact, quite a bit darker. So I'm gonna paint the fins first, or the rear tail units, just to see what this color blue looks like when it dries. So I'm happy with the blue. Must wear gloves next time. And with that, I've applied the blue to the fuselage. I hate this moment. Because of the high contrasting colours, any errors with a masking will jump out and laugh at me. And it's quite a task to correct any blemishes with these strong colours. It'll do lad. So I've sealed everything in with several coats of Tamiya gloss varnish. Now as you can see there's been some big changes since I showed you the other decals that I created previously. As the build went on it started to dawn on me that there were quite a few differences. First nagging one was the colour. The actual logo and the code letters look black rather than a dark blue. And in the end I gave in and I've changed it all to a very, very dark blue, almost black. Also the flag was completely different. I had to redraw that. And I've also done a few changes to the code letters and the logo. One thing you notice that's missing here are the rings. My fault, I should have known. Now because I'm using an inkjet printer, any color going on a dark background will wash out. You literally won't see it. This process only works with light colour backgrounds, so white, silver, light grey, anything darker, it's a waste of time. Now these issues go away if you've got a laser printer. So what I'm going to have to do is try and use the Airfix decals, so far as the rings go. Now they're old and they have that yellow tinge, but hopefully that yellow tinge will disappear on a dark background. My biggest worry is that the decal will disintegrate and then I'm really in trouble. What springs to mind is I'm up the creek without a paddle. So you'll soon find out whether that worked or not. So I got the FX decals to work. I knew I could, providing they didn't disintegrate on me. Plenty of decal solution was needed though. For decals over four decades old, not bad. So let's get these custom decals on. I roughly cut out the decal. And then with care, cut around the decal, making sure I only cut the film and not the backing paper. I found that if I go through to the backing paper, I get more of a prominent edge to the film, which I don't want. So I don't know whether you can see in the light where I've cut the film here. So I've placed the decal in water for about 10 seconds, no more. And I'll try and keep it as flat as possible when I bring it out. I want to put as little stress as I can on this. Now the decal will release very quickly. Here I'm just cleaning the surplus film off. Then on a wet surface the decal is placed. Now this stuff has a bad habit of folding back on itself with very little effort. So great care is needed regardless of the size of the decal. Then very very carefully the excess water is squeezed out. Now I didn't use any decal solution on this model. I have done in the past on this stuff but it can be very hit and miss. So because they went down reasonably well, I didn't bother. Now these are in no way anywhere near as good as a factory produced decal. 
they have their limits and it does show. But it was at the time the only option available to me. With the decals left to dry, they're all sealed in with a couple of coats of satin varnish. So while the fuselage is drying, I'm going to add some detail or patina to the wings. So first thing I'm doing is adding a very, very thin coat of Tamiya Grey. With that thoroughly dry, I dry brush some Mr. Metal Colour Aluminium over the top. And I've masked off an area and I'm adding a Vallejo dark brown wash just around the cowl doors. Once that's thoroughly dry, I can either rub it with a cloth or give it a very, very light sand. Now the rule of thumb here with a model this small and petite, I have to be very careful about breaking the surface too much. Otherwise it's going to look stupid. Less is best on a tiny model. Now with the varnish dry on the fuselage, all I've added here is a light panel wash on some of the raised panels. That's all I've done and that's all I'm going to do. Now something I meant to do and I completely forgot about was remove this lump. It needed replacing with an anti-collision light. Never mind. I haven't dried fitted any of this and this is where I always come unstuck at the model, right at the very end. I never learn. I'm going to make a start on the wing and the struts first because if I do have any issues that's where they'll be. Well that amazingly fitted with no real issues, just literally clicked into place. So I've been wanting to build this kit for some time and I've done it. It's been sat in the cupboard for many decades and the only thing that put me off, I think as I said previously, was a decal sheet. For its time, it's a great little kit. Surface detail is raised, but it's nice and petite. It works. The pilots are superb. The interior pretty good. The only thing that let it down was the transparent parts. They were bad now, they were bad then. So I hope you've enjoyed the build. I want to thank you for watching. And I do hope to see you for the next one.